to be uh, you have to be very careful. And I mean, this is where monitoring comes into effect because, like you said, I I had this happen too. So I had uh, a product, a pet product, and when I saw what I was going to be paying, it was thirty eight thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of. Lunch with them, lunch with them. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing understanding Amazon fees, shattering misinformation, and strategizing 2024. We're also going to be discussing the different misconceptions and strategies to avoid low inventory level fees. Also, how to plan your overage fees for 2024, and what are the actions to avoid getting hit hard when 2024 fees take effect? Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, I think this is a great topic starting out the new year, and that's understanding Amazon fees and shattering misinformation and strategizing for 2024. Our guest is an Amazon inventory management expert and co-founder and CEO of SoStock. She's also an Amazon seller. She's a speaker and consultant. Her regular clients include seven and eight figure sellers. And she's been a repeat guest multiple times on Lunch with Norm. And I am talking about Chelsea Cohen. And by the way, she puts on a great Christmas party with uh, Kevin King and Amy Weiss. And now let's have a word for, from our sponsor. Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viably is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. Where is Miss Cohen? Hello, hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I am doing fine. I have, last time I saw you uh, was at that spectacular party you guys threw. Absolutely. Yeah, that was uh, super fun. You know, the, the, the one thing though, everybody was just into it. Nobody was taking a lot of pictures. I haven't seen a lot of pictures. I'm so bad at that. <laughs> but like just in general, like I saw a few, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, if you never, and I'm just the listeners, This was unbelievable what was put together. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot to impress me, uh, but that really impressed me. Like there was, what, 50 different uh, uh, people walking around in character, Mm -hmm. kind of like a Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, uh, which there was really were cool. aerialists. There was a, a snowball fight. There was the Grinch. Um, and there's actually, we're, planning on doing a Halloween party uh, here in Austin during Unboxed. Oh, very so we good. Have a, we have a sizzle reel for anyone who missed the the event. Uh, I know Kevin has posted it. I've posted yes. it. So it's floating around. So you get an idea of that. And then if you can imagine that as Halloween haunted house and, you know, costumes and all that sort of thing. Uh, and Kevin always outdoes himself. So, um, you know, that's kind of his, his uh, mark that he makes is it's always got to be better. So you should definitely, especially if you're going to unbox, definitely want to get in there early to get on the list. Well, I hope I, uh, I hope I get invited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about Amazon. So one of the big topics right now is what's going to be happening with these bloody Amazon fees. They yeah. keep like sneaking things in every which way. <laughs> now the one that bothers me the most, um, I, I think this is, I got to be careful what I say because mm-hmm. uh, uh, this one, when they brought in the, uh, you had to have a minimum uh, amount, like this latest, the latest fee yeah. that they're putting in. Low inventory level, yep. That's killing me. Like, why are you doing that to the sellers? It's hard enough already. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. (laughs) Um, It's interesting. A lot of people don't understand it. First and foremost, because the fulfillment fees came down, the actual fulfillment fees. Right. Um, I think a lot of, I always like to ask why. Why is Amazon doing the things that they're doing? 
um, in any instance, you know, with any big corporation, why are the decisions being made? What are the, you know, repercussions? I think some of it has to do with the FTC, to be honest. They want to appear like they're because one of the one of the um, complaints was that they have just hit sellers so hard with fees. Yeah. So they've brought down the fulfillment fees. I think that that they want that to be a sign of of good faith to the FTC during this whole investigation. Um, and so what they've done instead is they've isolated their cost centers. So rather than a shotgun approach of applying fulfillment fees to everyone, they've reduced the fulfillment fees and then they have the inventory placement fee and the um, low inventory level fees, which are the mo more expensive parts of their fulfillment network. So if you have Amazon, they want to get that, you know, two day prime uh, or faster. Yeah. So they have um, they've they've shifted to what they are referring to as regionalization. So they have eight different places where inventory is sent in the those those regions service that specific region. So they're not sending things from, you know, Texas to California. They're sending things within that region. So when you don't have enough inventory spread across these regions, Amazon has to still fulfill. So it's costing them. They're having to express freight inventory longer distances when you have too little inventory um, available for them to access. And that's why they're charging more for people because it's a fulfillment fee. It's not a storage fee. And that's the general misconception is they're saying, you know, well, why would I be charged extra storage if I have seven days of storage that's or seven days of supply? That's not what they're doing. They're charging you extra fulfillment fees. So if you don't sell anything during that low inventory level fee period, you're not going to incur fees. And like they say, and I even hate saying this, but you'll save money. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're saying. Yeah, that's what they they always they always find a way to say that, you know. Yeah. Always. Minimal amount of sellers will be affected, you know, you'll save money. It's they'll save money for sure. I mean, multiply, you know, multiply that cost across, you know, the millions of sellers on the platform and, you know, simple changes like this are huge for their pocket. Now, I'm just curious, uh, and I, I've heard a lot of, uh, especially in the WhatsApp group recently, but tracking all of these costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you even start to keep? Now, I, I try to do this, and I think I do an okay job at it. Yeah. Uh, but how do you even start? How do you make sure that you trap everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's you know, that's I think the most important conversation that should be had this year. Um, it's, there's a lot of different pieces and this is something that I'm diving into. I'm doing a lot of work, you know, for us to build those things out and for also working with, um, some, some sellers on what that looks like. The, I think the most important thing is to start and probably to start with storage. You know, that you've got fulfillment fees are fairly steady but storage is what's going to kill you. The storage fees, the inventory fees, those are going to be extremely impactful. And a lot of people don't realize what they're being charged and, and when, right? How old is that inventory? So I would say the first thing is to get your head around how old your inventory is, because it lets you know when you're going to be charged um, aged inventory fees. And also how many months have you been being charged? So you have an inventory age report, um, and this is actually something that we pull into so stocked because you can send inventory in and then just forget about it because it's not producing a lot of revenue and we're very revenue focused, not as as profit or um, or cost focused. So understanding what's in that aged inventory report and then being able to project it out into the future. So it's not what am I going to be charged this next month, which Amazon will tell you, they'll tell you in those, those fee reports, what they're going to charge you this next month. And they'll tell you the age of the inventory. 
So if you can understand the age of the inventory and then play out into the future, you'll know when you're about to be hit by fees so that you can take action before that point. Okay. And there, there are a couple of companies out there that have been talked about. So first of all, uh, so stocked, mm -hmm. so stocked is very good, especially for inventory. Uh, it's, you know, one of the best systems out there or one of the best apps out there. Uh, and then you've got another one that keeps coming up in the group. It's seller board. So, uh, there's, there's two different apps, uh, probably with two different types of usages. So um, seller board is really great for trapping every little cost, I think. Uh, and then you've got the, and then where so stock sort of uh, overlaps is they trap fees as well, but they're, they're, they manage the inventory at a much higher level. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So our, you know, our claim to fame is our forecasting, right? Being able to be flexible with your forecasting play out. Um, we call it forecast modeling. So you make a change and everything will be recalculated. The importance of finance and fees, it all has to do with inventory. So you can guess at what your profit's going to be, but any inventory shift is going to change. Um, those equations. And a lot of the time in the seller community, it's very focused on what is happening right now or what just happened. With inventory, it's a boat that moves very slowly. And the most expensive mistakes you'll make in your business are inventory mistakes. So you need to project out looking three months or six months down the road and planning for that. That's one of the things that um, we focus so stocked on. And one of the things that I like to tell sellers to to have some sort of strategy. So it's not that you're getting hit with, you know, we had a seller who we did an audit and there was one ASIN that they were about to be charged $14,000 in Jeez. aged inventory fees. Um, they place a removal order and the removal order cost them $7,000 but they saved $7,000. Yeah. They didn't know that until we did an audit and showed them. So it's important to play out. And, and that's just this one month over the next year, they're looking at, you know, tens of thousands on just one ASIN if they did nothing. So it's important to realize that you may have some ASINs that are killing your profit and doing that, that audit or that discovery sooner rather than later it is important for the health of your business moving forward. Fail quick is a great expression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Save you a few bucks. Okay. What about overage freeze? How do you even plan for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there are people who I'm sure are uh, experiencing overage fees right now. It's not something that everyone's going to face, but for people who are right on the edge with their, uh, capacity manager limits, it's a very real problem. You know, you might have people who currently they bid for storage, right? Overage fees, you probably won't get overage fees unless you're built bidding for storage. So most of the year it should be fine, but we're looking at prime day. If you have big plans for prime day, you may not have the space to actualize those plans. You may want to bid for storage. And then um, what happens is you you place a bid, you know, for anyone who hasn't isn't familiar, just kind of overview, you you place a bid, basically, it's similar to PPC, where if you've got the highest bid, uh, Amazon's going to award you extra space, and they'll go from the highest down to the lowest. Uh, once you've locked in your rate, though, it's locked in. So the sooner you place your bid, if you know, and you've calculated and again, to the theme of projecting outward, right? Not like waiting to the last second, projecting out. You can see uh, this current month and two months worth of, of projected storage limits. So if you look at in the coming months and you see July, I'm not going to have enough. You know, and I would say, you know, you can see that at May. In May, you should start planning and say, this is what I plan to sell for Prime Day. Do I have enough space? How much am I willing to pay for that space and place your bid in May? Because by July, the demand is going to be so much higher because the supply will have 
right. you know, decreased significantly. So you place that bid and your bid gets locked in at May rates versus, you know, July rates. So that would, I think, say be the first thing to do in terms of planning for, um, for capacity for things like Prime Day. And then uh, the overage fees will only come into play if you don't sell through your inventory. Overage fees are the fees that Amazon charges you if you're over the limit. So what some sellers are facing now, I know because we've chatted with some of them, are they didn't sell what they thought they would. They had placed those bids, they got more space, and then Amazon said, nope, we're cutting your space. You didn't, you know, you didn't fulfill. You have to pay this, you know, reservation fee and we're going to charge you uh, for being over your limit. So there are if you are currently over your limit, which some sellers might be right now, that will block you from selling, sending in new inventory, which might be your best sellers are being blocked by you know, your slow sellers. And then we're back to 2020, 2021 uh, scenario. Right. Um, so overage fees come into play and the choices are either remove inventory or liquidate, market yourself out of that, or place another bid. If you're going to be over for the next month, you might want to place another bid for the next month to try to buy more space um, till you sell out. If if that's going to be, if it's cheaper to bid for more space, then it's going to be to pay those overage fees. One of the things uh, I like about uh, your app as well is that you've got a lot of uh, free tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you want to share some of those tools or the URLs. Um, I'm not, I don't know mm -hmm. if Kelsey has them, but there's some really great tools for sellers out there that are absolutely free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so stocks.com forward slash tools is uh, going to get you. Yeah, it's going to get you to I always say when you know, if you, uh, my team sets up links, let me let it be easy enough for me to say on a podcast without yeah. much explanation, <laughs> you know. Um, so some of those the tools there in terms of cost savings are our product resizer tool and um, our cart and pallet optimizer. We've had a lot of really good results with the with the resizer tool and what that could that save you a ton of money. Yeah, it's it's based on fulfillment fees, and the objective is to get you into a lower a lower fee tier for your fulfillment fees. Okay, so check those out. Um, I, I know Kels, uh, Kels, Chelsea's been on before talking about these and we've had some uh, great feedback on it. So they're absolutely free to use. And I think you'll be uh, pretty amazed at how much money you could save just by repackaging some of your products. And some people, you, you can't do it, but yeah. it is worth it. And, and by the way, uh, sometimes it will absolutely pay for itself to repackage everything. You'll save more money than not changing. So even if you've just bought packaging, it's it's crazy the amount that you can save. Mm -hmm. so, so let's see. We oh, why don't we? Uh, why don't we, it's close to the bottom of the hour? And I see there's a bunch of questions that have come in. Sure. We are going to be talking about all these questions uh, towards the end of the podcast. So just before the wheel of Kelsey, we'll get to everybody's questions. But uh, if this is the first time that you're listening uh, to the to uh, Lunch with Norm, we have something called the Wheel of Kelsey, where we give away a product. And to enter, uh, to get a chance to enter, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people, you'll get a second entry. Chelsea, what do we got to give away today? Uh, yeah, today we're doing two months free of So Stocked with a, a conversation with me about your inventory. So uh, if you want to jump on a call with me and have me look at what you're doing, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Fantastic. Uh, let's go to a word from our sponsor, then we'll come right back with Chelsea. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, Get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. 
Hire through VAA today. And now let's get back to the show. All right. So uh, just looking at the comments. So from now on, instead of uh, Cool Hand 99, it's Jedi 99. <laughs> just, just saying, just saying, Luke. <laughs> All right. Now, what are, let's go back to the fees and some of the fees that you're seeing um, that might pop up or that we have to look at other than the overage and other than the low inventory fees. Anything else on the radar? Um, like I mentioned, the aged inventory fees, some people don't really know about those. So it's important to understand how those work. Uh, they, we used to, we were all familiar with the long-term storage fees that kick in at a year. And, um, you know, when you have your inventory in there for a year, you're, you start to be charged. But two years ago, Amazon introduced the aged inventory fees. And last year they moved it from kicking in at nine months to kicking in at six months. And every single month that rate increases. So at six months, you're paying 50 cents per cubic foot. Then you're paying a dollar, then a dollar 50 the next month, then $3 and 80 cents, then $4 per cubic foot, 420. And then you're back to 690 when you're a year in. And that's stacked on top of your monthly fees, your monthly storage fees. So it gets to be pretty crazy, I would say, to, um, again, back to how do you start mapping out and and you know, checking on your costs, this storage portion is going to be a big piece uh, of, you know, a cost center that people overlook. Right. And uh, so understanding that is, I think, crucial. Yeah. When you start talking about what was the, what was the, uh, the at 180, what was the cost? At, at 180, you're at 50 cents per cubic foot. On and top. what was the last one? The last one is 690. $6.90 per cubic foot. Absolutely crazy. So yeah. you have to be, uh, you have to be very careful. And I mean, this is where monitoring comes into effect because mm -hmm. like you said, I, I had this happen too. So I had uh, a product, a pet product. And when I saw what I was going to be paying, it was 38,000 mm bucks. -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of money to lose. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, we have, you know, I've talked to eight figure and even nine figure sellers who have, you know, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars in projected costs uh, just for over overage fees, not overage yeah. fees, but excess inventory and aged inventory fees projected out for a year. So we like to show a year to really give the impact. Someone goes, okay, well, you know, my age inventory fees are $8,000 this month that, you know, that's not great, but, you know, it's something that I'll get to it next month. But when you look at the numbers are, you know, tens of thousands or a hundred thousand dollars, that becomes more urgent. And when you're looking at something like that, you, you have to take action. So, and every day you don't take action, you come closer to that, you know, $6 fee mm -hmm. and you know, look at your listing, play around with the pricing. Uh, you might not want to um, remove it. You might be able to play around with the price where you can still make money, but maybe you offer it as a, uh, a prime deal or, or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, but try to move that inventory. It's so, so important. Uh, yeah. I don't, care what you do. It might be driving traffic, external traffic, uh, beefing up your PPC, doing something, but yeah. getting that inventory out of there because uh, you you'd rather do that. Or, I mean, at worst, uh, at worst, uh, you know, remove it. And then you're going to, like you said, it was 50%, it was 7,000 bucks. So you're caught in the middle of, you know, $7,000 or $14,000. Pick yeah. your poison. Yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of the time we've, I've actually started putting together calculations uh, that I've run for a few people on looking at their catalog, looking at what, what their liabilities are in that, in that uh, realm, and then doing the calculations on the cost of removal and how many months it will take to recoup that cost. Like if, what are you going to, what are you going to be paying in the next three months in terms of your, um, excess inventory fees, your aged inventory fees. And then if you were to remove, 
the the offending inventory because sometimes you could have a thousand units and only 300 of those units are incurring age inventory fees so it's not just a matter of i'm overstock here i'm getting charged let me knee-jerk <clears throat> knee reaction remove all this inventory then you can't send inventory in and you've spent a bunch on removals for inventory that's not even costing you that much so it's important to have the analysis be um in you know you need to be very understanding of how the fees work and, and really know what the age of that inventory is. And again, back to the aged inventory report, that report will tell you which products are over that 180 days so that you can understand, you know, what, what is costing you versus just kind of looking at that number and saying, I was charged $20,000 in October, you know, what's happening like we had some people do November, I think it was November 5th, something like that. Yeah. So uh, let's go down a bit different rabbit hole. Uh, Kelsey, mm -hmm. throw up that uh, comment from Simon. Starts, uh, yeah, that one. All right. There is a lot of people talking about exactly this. Mm -hmm. And then we had, you know, Eric, Andrew Erickson, he was on the other day and yeah. he was... I noticed that he commented on something in the WhatsApp group too, uh, that he said, I, look, Amazon might be, you know, treating us bad, but it's still 95% of my business. I think that's what yeah. he said. Mm -hmm. And we still have to look at Omni channel, but Amazon's still the big player. It might be the elephant in the room, but it's still the big player out there. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think <clears throat> personally, I think if every seller walked away, Amazon would be very happy because they'd have mm -hmm. their own products to sell then. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what's going to happen, but it sometimes it does feel like it's just going to implode. And yeah. I don't think it ever will. I don't know if I wish it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what's it, you know, I, I, what do you think uh, yeah. about some of the stuff that they're doing? Yeah, I mean, there is going to be and we're seeing more and more diversification um, into Walmart. Uh, Walmart is now also teamed up with Shopify to yeah. have an app now uh, that connects the marketplaces to make it easier. Which they had before. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're, they're promoting it more heavily. So you have that and Amazon's not going to go away. I think mm -hmm. that the, it's going to be interesting to see the changes over time with the FTC. Um, you know, to that point of the fact that the fee structure has shifted with fulfillment. We, I've followed, we've done our Amazon seller news for two years now. We celebrated our hundredth um, issue a couple months ago and we're listed on the top of the Amazon. If you Google Amazon seller news, you'll see so stocked up there. And part of the reason why I love doing that. You know, even when we came into carbon six, we've just shifted it over to um, to have carbon six uh, sponsoring it or covering it. I still edit everything. But the reason why I love doing that is because I stay up to date with what's happening. What are the battles with, you know, Shopify, Walmart and Amazon and that sort of thing. Um, so you're seeing a shift. You know, people are diversifying, but Amazon is not going anywhere. I do think that as you follow along in the news and the policies, you see how external forces like the FTC and like what, you know, Walmart's doing and what UPS is doing, they make changes based on that. So, you know, people can look at this low inventory fee as a, as a problem. It just makes it so that you have to be better at your inventory management you know, because the fulfillment fees as a whole have adjusted. Um, so there will be, I do feel like there will be a market consolidation in the three P space. We're already seeing companies like Thrasio, you know, we've been focused on the market consolidation of aggregators, but there are sellers who are seeing their competitors die off. So I yeah. think that that's, that's, you know, the sellers that are not getting granular with their, um, with their fees and their costs and their profit are the ones that are going to suffer the most. And this year I think is crucial for people to really understand 
um, their unit economics and their true margins. Yeah, and building a brand. Yes. You know, I, I think that's yeah. important. They've all, Amazon's already, you know, has been talking about that for, for quite some time now. But uh, I remember back, oh gosh, it was probably mid-2000s. I was visiting my parents in Maine and my dad and I, I think we were having a cigar talking about this, uh, but we were talking about Walmart mm -hmm. and how Walmart rules the world, you know, mm -hmm. and at the time Walmart wanted uh, a Walmart 16 miles from every, uh, now I think it's 10 miles, but 16 miles from uh, each individual right across the States. Mm -hmm. And how can anybody ever compete with Walmart? Now, this little known guy, Jeff Bezos, comes out, starts selling books, and all of, all, all of a sudden, years later, dominates and is kicking Walmart's butt. Yeah. And Walmart is doing a good job coming back, by the way. But um, where's that next cycle going to be? And I don't know where that is. Mm -hmm. But there is somebody like I, there's, you know, back in 90 or uh, 2005, having that cigar. I always remember just talking to my dad about this and him, he is a pretty smart business guy. You know, just nobody's going to be able to compete. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos comes up. Who's going to be that next competitor? And I don't know the answer to that, mm -hmm. but it's bound to be there. There's bound to be somebody at some point that comes up. And it'll be very interesting to see who rises to those ranks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be challenging. Um, but there are, you know, contender shop, uh, TikTok shop is, is trying to come at them, obviously, you know, yeah. Timu and Shen, but the tides may be turning for Timu and Shen because they're getting around through a loophole in our, um, in our trade system, which is that in that product under, $800 shipments under $800 are not fine, right? Don't pay the same taxes and duties. Right. So you have it's there's favoritism to domestic or to foreign, you know, foreign commerce versus domestic. And they're talking about um, you've got some interests in uh, Congress talking about, do we need to change that? Do we need to change it? Um, it's going to hurt a lot of Canadians. Yeah. Well, they, they're looking at change it by country. So oh, okay. Target specific countries uh, to help with domestic commerce and supporting domestic commerce. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, the Chinese companies coming in. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with those discussions if they end up going anywhere. Well, let's, uh, let's talk, let's go back to the fees. And you had mentioned it just a few seconds ago about uh, sellers knowing these costs and mm -hmm. making sure that they uh, they uh, they calculate and make sure that they understand exactly mm -hmm. what the profitability is. Yeah. So how can businesses navigate around this like fine line between scaling and profitability? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, scaling. It's you hear the word scale and we've heard it for years yeah. and. I don't know what that means to an individual seller, um, but what it means to me and what I think it means to um, business in general is profit. You can't scale without profit. You can scale into profitability or you can scale into bankruptcy. And that's, you know, going to become my new my new favorite catchphrase because it's true. You can't if you scale, but you don't understand your actual profit margins, you're going to find yourself in a position that is untenable for actual profitability and your margins are going to shrink to the point where you can't, you know, you, you can't sustain that. Yeah. And there is a great book. Uh, is it not, I think it's Jeffrey Archer. I think that's his name. Uh, crossing the chasm. Mm. It's, it's all about, it's more about tech, but you can definitely apply it to, uh, to sellers, you know, mm -hmm. 3PL or 3PL. Um, yeah. Third-party sellers. Uh, I think it's, um, I think it's important that you understand this, especially when you want to launch your second, third, fourth product and how do you do it? Um, capital is probably the most, the most important thing, but mm -hmm. understanding every single little piece of where you're spending, what your expenses are, uh, yeah. come into it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's how to claw back cap capital, you know, you, you find that profit and it's what drives, you know, you can take that money and use it. So any, 
you know, if you can readjust your fulfillment fees, if you can avoid some people, you know, a lot of people restock a product that's not even as profitable as they think it is, yeah. you know, if they haven't factored in the storage cost. Um, if a product is, you know, uh, here's an easy way to to judge this. If you look at your MLQ and you look at your daily velocity and you assess how many months do I have to sell through my MLQ? If you've got a product that, you know, it takes five months to sell through, well, then that gives you a hint at the actual cost. So you put your cost together, you say, this is my landed cost. And then it takes me five months to sell through. What is it going to cost me in monthly fees? And we actually, if anyone is interested, um, I don't have this on our website, but if you're interested, you can um, reach out to me and I can send you a link. The multiple for how how much is are you going to be paying on average in storage fees based on the number of months? I think it's something like, you know, if your storage fees are going to be three X for five months or something like that. Um, so you can look at, you know, you can look at your your costs and say, here's my landed cost. I it takes five months to sell through. So I have to take my storage cost and multiply that by three. And that's my actual cost for the product. Is it still profitable? So there are things like that where you can do an analysis and you could build out a spreadsheet just to look at that MOQ sales velocity um, and then average average storage costs and landed cost. Like those free, three or four figures across your entire catalog um, would give you a good idea of what to restock and what not to. Right. Okay. Now, I think we've got a bunch of questions. Kels, why don't we get into them? Okay. So the first one is from Simon. Uh, is there any way to track your inventory accurately? How old it is? How much of each ASIN to send and when? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we do that at, at in SoStocked. Uh, so in terms I guess, of... I guess you're biased, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was why you know we built the software is... You know, in 2018, there was nothing really that was working right. Um, there's a lot of different factors, especially as you expand globally. If you have a warehouse, um, all of those factors come into play. So, you know, just some tips you need to know, uh, like your reorder point. So to establish your reorder point is actually not that difficult. You need to know your buffer stock and your lead time. So if you know how long it takes you, to once you place the order to it actually arriving ready to sell, that gives you your first number. So let's say it's 60 days and you want 30 days of buffer stock. Then you have to order 90 days before you stock out. So that gives you your reorder point. Um, and that helps you to understand when to send or when and how much to send. And then as far as how old your inventory is, uh, like I mentioned, the aged inventory report will tell you that. So you can predict what am, when am I going to go into aged inventory fees? When is the inventory, which what inventory and when is it going to hit that six months? Um, so that aged inventory fee. And, you know, as I mentioned, these are all things that that we track in so stocked. Uh, if you don't have the time or the desire to build out massive spreadsheets. All right. Next question. Okay. Uh, is there a software that will create shipments for us? Then all we need to do is send a pick list and FBA labels to our warehouse. Um, creating the shipments. Um, we have a flat file that is, is downloaded from our forecast. There are other softwares out there that do create shipments, um, push the shipment from, you know, from where you're at to into Amazon. You need to make sure that you trust that forecast if you're using that forecast. So you can either use the system to plug in the numbers and then it'll create it for you. Um, you can use flat file with our system or you can do a combination of, of the two. So I would say for any system that you're using for shipment creation, um, if it has a forecast attached to it, make sure that it makes sense for your business. Okay, this one is from LinkedIn. Uh, how is low inventory placement fee uh, saving us money? So avoiding the low inventory placement fee is what is saving you guys money. Um, 
the fulfillment fees have come down. So Amazon, they brought the fulfillment fees down. And so you're paying less per unit coming into uh, 2024 in fulfillment fees. And you'll only be charged additional fees if you have less inventory. So if you have less than four weeks of inventory, then you're charged extra fees. So because fulfillment fees are being are, are decreasing, the people that are going to pay um, more money are the people that don't keep enough inventory in stock. All right, and our last question, uh, to overcome the over limit issue that prevented me sending bestsellers uh, was to send into our other brand accounts. Can you foresee any problems with that? Mm -hmm. Amazon doesn't like you selling the same items on multiple accounts. Right. So there's a big risk there. Some people still do it, but it is against TOS. Um, as far as, as far as, you know, that, I mean, it is a workaround if you're willing to take that risk, but it is against TOS. So yeah, that's a life ban, right? Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Nowadays, I don't know, but you know. I, I know you can have two accounts, no problem. But yeah. uh, one of the uh, one of the key points is okay. you can't sell the same uh, product. And there's a reason for that. It's yeah. calling in boxing in the price. And so you can go in against your competitors and you can have one at selling one of your brand, the same brand, selling at a very low cost, medium, and then a higher cost. Mm -hmm. And then the person would just come in and, you know, buy at whatever level they want, basically. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it is um, a different product and different brand. Different product. Oh, okay. Brand, that, that changes everything. That's no problem. Yeah, no problem. No problem. As long as you are able to track everything, um, I'd say, you know, you have to be pulling data from both accounts to be able to manage uh, the different brands, but that you shouldn't have a problem with that. And that's, um, pretty smart. Good job. <laughs> well, that's Simon. He's, you know, just a smart guy. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> okay. I think that's it. Chelsea. Yeah. Where do people get a hold of you? Where do they get so stocked? Sure. So, uh, to get a hold of me, so stock.com forward slash connect. And, um, you can reach me, you can find our tools there. Um, another thing that you might be um, interested in is sostock.com forward slash headlines. That's how to sign up for our newsletter. Um, we have a white paper coming out all about fees. Uh, Carbon6.io forward slash fee stack. Vanessa co-wrote that with me. The old version is out from last year. We're about to release the new version. But if you sign up there, you'll get on the wait list um, to receive that. Okay. Let me know when that comes out. I'll make sure yeah. we uh, promote that. Absolutely. And then I want to do a final plug for, I'm going to be diving a lot deeper into this topic, into unit economics, um, into, you know, using profitability as a strategic advantage at the virtual BDSS on uh, February 21st and 22nd. Okay. Very good. All right. So I think that's it. Get your final wheel of Kelsey hashtag wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people. You get a second entry. And while you do that, I'm going to do an ad read. All right. Ready, Kels? Okay. This is for seller basics. Hey, Amazon sellers ever faced accountant suspensions, ASIN hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing seller basics, your accounts, uh, your Amazon account guardian which is $99 per month, Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your business from these challenges. Plus, this membership offers free legal consultations from seasoned e-commerce attorneys. No long-term contracts, cancel with just a month's notice, and you can view Seller Basics as your Amazon account's health plan. You can also check them out at sellerbasics.com. And now for the disclaimer, Seller Basics isn't an insurer or law firm. Consultations come from independent firms. Results may vary. Memberships needed before events leading to claims and terms apply. Now, also, I was talking to Paul Raffleson over at Seller Basics. Uh, we do have a uh, claim code as well where you can save $10. So that $99 comes down to $89. So I'm not sure, Kels, if you could put the code in there. If not, you can go to lunchwithnorm.com and check it out. Okay, so let's go to the wheel. 
It's time for the Wheel of Elsie. So here we go. I'll shuffle these up for everyone. And if you are the winner, please email me k at lunchwithnorm.com. And looks like it is Hypology. All right. Hypology's been oh. winning. Yeah, he's on a bit of a win streak, I'd say. Um, so congratulations, Hypology. Uh, just email me and we'll connect you with your prize and you'll be good to go. All right, Chelsea. So, are you going on the cruise? I am not. I get seasick. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> He's gonna say we're gonna see you in a, a little bit of well, just a couple weeks away. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Lunch with the lunch with the lunch with the